So here's the thing. The Buxtap Ultra C Pro really is a good ink productivity tablet, and I'll talk about why I liked improvements books made or the Buxtap Ultra C and go over its most important features and also shortcomings in a second. But first, let me tell you, I hate that I like this tablet for two reasons. First, the Buxtap Ultra C Pro was announced only six months after the regular version. I mean, really? Ying is developing so incredibly slow, but Bux somehow still sees the need to crank out new tablets in the same category multiple times a year. At this point, that's more often than Samsung, Google, or Apple are updating their high-end smartphones or tablets. And second, they updated the keyboard cover with this new release, which, as a buyer of the Tab Ultra C, I find infuriating because that new and improved cover isn't compatible with the older model. And I'd be stuck with that flappy mess that came with the Tab Ultra C if I hadn't gotten a Tab Ultra C Pro. Okay, enough of that. Let's see what's what. The Bookstep Ultra C Pro is a 10.3 inch AIM tablet with an AIM Kaleido 3 color screen. I'll talk about the specifics of the display in a second. Let's first have a look at the new build and specs. The tablet still uses the same industrial design as their regular version, which by the way, wasn't replaced by this one. So both tablets are available side by side. The most notable change is the lighter weight of 450 grams, which is 30 grams lighter than the Tab Ultra C. And one of the very few occasions that it's actually on point with the official specs. Nice. The low weight is definitely noticeable and making handling more comfortable. The reason why it's lighter is the smaller battery size of only 4600 milliamp hours instead of 6300 in the regular Tab Ultra C. Unfortunately, there's still the, in my opinion, completely pointless camera on the back side, which still worsens usability a bit because you can't put the tablet down flat on a desk without wobbling. Books highlights the faster Octaco CPU, which honestly wasn't really needed in my opinion, because the regular books to bolt receipt is fast enough already, and the limiting factor is still the eing screen in these types of devices. So in date of their use, I didn't really notice a big difference, to be honest. But Geekbench 6 shows the Tab Ultra C Pro to be quite a bit faster than the regular model, though which means the newer model is better for performance-hungry apps. It also has 6 gigs of RAM, which is 50% more than before, and 128 gigs of internal storage, same as with the regular model. You can still expand the internal storage with a microSD card, which I doubt many people will need, but it's still awesome to have the option. The power button is still on the top side, the USB-C port at the bottom, and the stereo speakers and microphones are also on these two sides of the tablet. What's new are the buttons to adjust the volume on the right side of the tablet. And the pogo pins for attaching the keyboard cover move to the back instead of being positioned on the left side of the tablet. What's better than on the Bookstep Ultra C is that the Bookstep Ultra C Pro feels sturdier when applying a bit of force by flexing it. It's not creaking and cracking like an old ship, still a teeny tiny bit, but totally within acceptable margins in my opinion. However, I don't like that I very clearly feel the edge of the aluminum body around the display when holding it in the hand. It's not completely flush with the front glass and it's somewhat sharp, so it's not very comfortable to hold when I put my thumb here. The front glass is scratch resistant, which I greatly appreciate with these sorts of devices. However, that also means that it doesn't come with the same paper-like texture as the Note Air series, which I think is fine and mostly a matter of taste. The Bookstep Ultra C Pro has a 10.3 inch in Kaleido 3 screen which can reproduce up to 4096 colors. As we already know from other devices with this technology, the colors are muted and not as saturated as with a normal LCD. So whatever anyone is telling you, 
don't expect vivid colors. That will set you up to be disappointed. But having said that, I still love having colors on here. Compared to a typical black and white ink screen, they enhance the user experience for comics and other color contents considerably, if you ask me. And I quickly got used to the muted colors. So when not directly comparing them, they don't appear to be as washed out. The way this works is there is an RGB layer on top of the regular Encarta 1200 screen, like the one you'd find in a Kindle. So the RGB filter with 150 BPI sits on top of the 300 BPI ink screen and the ink pixels are darkened under the colored subpixels that shouldn't be visible. So when red and green subpixels are blocked from reflecting light this way, the screen appears to be blue. Since ink is a reflective technology, it's a smart solution to introduce colors to this type of screen. Because colored ink particles aren't ready for prime time yet, as we've seen with the Big Megali. Find a link in the description below. But that color filter approach has the downside of the screen being pretty dark. So without activating the bill in front LED, I personally don't use the Bookstep Ultra C Pro indoors. With the front LED, however, the screen is easily readable, which makes this a non-issue for me personally. Only if you like to use ink without a front LED, this isn't for you. The front LED itself is unfortunately a bit darker compared to the regular Tap Ultra C. The maximum brightness is 42 nits instead of 49 nits on the regular model. And not just that, it has a more noticeable brightness gradient from left to right. Roughly a 14% difference when looking at the numbers, which can be a problem for people sensitive to such issues. Thanks to the 150 BPI resolution of the color filter, the screen looks pretty good. All the Kaleido screens had this rasterized look, and Kaleido 3, on the other hand, is much better at the rasterization and shimmering isn't as obvious and looks more like a very subtle grain. But that's not a surprise as it's exactly the same as with the Tap Ultra C and also same as the Tap Ultra C. The Tap Ultra C Pro comes with a Wacom pen, which allows for a low latency note taking. And it's awesome with only around 20 milliseconds latency. It feels very natural to write on despite not having a paper-like screen texture which has the advantage of not having to replace the pen tips as often since the smoothest screen surface is less abrasive. Pressure sensitivity is fine-tuned great and even tilting works well. The Books Pen 2 Pro comes in a box and is the more expensive pen version Books is offering. And you can feel it because it's a bit heavier and has an eraser on top which improves user experience a lot. So let's talk about the most annoying thing about the Books Tab Ultra C Pro, which isn't actually a tablet's fault. The new keyboard cover with the Integrate mouse pad is actually pretty awesome. This is so much better than the version that's available for the regular Books Tab Ultra C. First off, it's not this flappy mess I came to hate with the other tablet. It was just a mess and I wish Books released another improved version with improved handling. And this is actually it. Books change the design, so the tablet leans on this freely adjustable stand, which holds its position, so you can easily angle and adjust it. The keyboard layout is essentially the same as before, with only minor changes to the function keys. Travel distance for the keys are good, considering a slim profile, and the individual key sizes are also balanced very well. The mousepad is not the largest, but works fine in terms of responsiveness nonetheless, even on the ink screen. As soon as you put the tablet into the keyboard cover, the tablet rotates the landscape mode, and this huge mouse cursor pops up. I found it looked a bit funny at first, but I quickly became used to it. So the tablet connects to the cover via these pins, so no need to fiddle around with Bluetooth. Just pop it in and you're good to go. Also no need to charge the cover since it's powered by the tablet itself. And last but not least, the outer material feels a bit less rubbery now. Still not exactly like leather, but definitely better than before. But not everything is perfect. There are two things I don't like about this new cover. 
The first thing is that the cover doesn't lie flat on the desk because of this flexible part right here. It's a minor issue because usually you flex it to angle the tablet when using it or you take the tablet out of the cover. But now that it has a constant connection through the pogo pins, you can't just fold the keyboard cover to the back and use the tablet because you're pressing on the keys with the other keyboard cover that wasn't an issue because the pogo pins weren't connected. Now, they are connected constantly, so taking the tablet out is essentially a must, even if you just quickly want to take a short note. So both things are not huge problems, but can be slightly inconvenient. So all in all, this offers a greatly improved user experience. The reason why I still find this keyboard incredibly infuriating is because it's only available for the Bookstep Ultra C Pro right now. So I bought the Bookstep Ultra C, including keyboard cover, for around 700 euros. And that honestly feel like people who bought one of the most expensive products in a company's portfolio should have at least the option to upgrade to a new and improved accessory without the company making it exclusively available to a new product. Sure, they changed the positions of the pogo pins and also of the internal magnets to hold the cover in place. But I feel like those things would have been solvable for their existing TEP Ultra C if the company really wanted to. But to take a step back, that's a personal issue and doesn't make the tablet or the keyboard cover any worse. As I said, it actually is a big improvement over the old one in terms of handling. And someone who has never learned the standard touch typing system, I usually still manage to blindly type around 60 to 80 words per minute on a regular notebook or desktop keyboard. And thanks to the key size and great layout of the keyboard cover, I am not really much slower on this one. So I was actually able to use this productively without any big annoyances. With 516 grams, it's still pretty heavy though actually roughly a hundred grams more than the old cover. So tablet, pen, and cover almost weigh a full kilo, which is pretty hefty if you ask me. Okay, so let's talk about the software, which is very familiar if you have seen any other books tap device. The most noticeable change is Android 12, which brings a couple of small usability improvements over the older tablets, mostly related to added labels to better understand different functions. But also that pop-ups and overlays seem to be optimized a bit better for eating. The book's launcher looks and feels like a regular Android launcher, which is different than on the Note Ear devices and smaller books tablets. I like this user interface a bit more because it offers more flexibility. Note-taking features are the same found on other books devices capable of note-taking, which means you get a quite large set of different features including pen types, laters, shapes, and templates. The AI functions are all included, meaning you can convert hand-drawn shapes, strike to text, and convert handwritten notes to type text. What's also great is the option to record audio directly on the page, and place it where it belongs. So coming back to a lecture or a meeting to see if you missed anything or get context on a note you made can be super helpful. Besides handwritten notes, there's also a mode for type text. So that's a basic word processor, which allows you to make good use of the keyboard cover and essentially converts the Bookstep Old Pro C Pro into a digital typewriter with a color display. Another great feature of the tablet is PDF functionality. My favorite feature is the columns mode, which allows to zoom in on portions of the page and then jump from segment to segment by just tapping a screen. This is incredibly helpful with scientific papers, which are typically formatted in multiple columns. But it's also useful for magazines, comics, and mangas. You can also annotate directly on the page without the need to convert the PDF file beforehand. And with the split screen mode, you can even show the document you're reading while looking something up in Google or taking a note in a separate notebook. So all in all, the Bookstab Ultra C Pro offers the same super useful productivity-focused feature set we already know from other books' tablets. 
And of course, you can also read regular books. Although the integrated ebook store isn't really a shop in the traditional sense, it only includes public domain books. So if you're looking for contemporary literature, you need to use Android apps, which I come to in a second, or the browser. The ebook functions include everything you'd expect. Text styling changes, note taking, and a dictionary function are available, to name the most important ones. The dictionary uses an online service to look up words, but you can also use dictionaries locally stored. But there are only three pre installed, two of those are Chinese. So to use those, you need to find the files and sideload them yourself. The coolest feature is probably the text-to-speech function that makes use of the default Android speech synthesis engine. You can select different languages and even dialects, and it works pretty well. It's obviously not as good as a professionally recorded audiobook, but good enough to continue in a book if you can't look at the screen. Only the initial setup seems to be overly complicated with the need to jump into multiple sub-menus to set up everything. So that could definitely be better. So let's listen how it sounds. One night, it was on the 20th of March, 1888, I was returning from a journey to a patient for I had now returned to civil practice. When my way led me through Baker Street, as I passed the well-remembered door, which must always be associated in my mind with my wooing, and with the dark incidents of the study in Scarlet, I was seized with a keen desire to see Holmes again, and to know how he was employing his extraordinary powers. His rooms were brilliantly lit, and, even as I looked up, I saw his tall, spare figure pass twice in a dark silhouette against the blind. He was pacing the room swiftly, eagerly, with his head sunk upon his chest and his hands clasped behind him. The possibility to use Android apps on Ying is still one of the most important features of the book's lineup. So the Bookstep Ultra C Pro obviously can also make use of Android apps. You can either sideload them or use the integratable Play Store to install them directly. To make apps work on Ying, the Tap Ultra C Pro has four different Ying modes available. I typically only use the regular HD mode or the ultra fast mode. The ultra fast mode enhances the refresh rate and also the response time on touch input. So when interacting with the screen like scrolling through a list or something, the tablet actually feels a bit more responsive than it would on other Eing screens. And thanks to the book Super Refresh technology, ghosting is also a bit less noticeable in this case. It's not completely gone, so it still can be an issue depending on the content, but definitely less noticeable when looking at fast-paced content. You can even watch videos on here if you really wanted to. Besides those modes, there are a couple of other dials and adjustments you can make to get even the most stubborn Android apps working on the Ying screen. Because almost none of those apps are meant to run on such a screen. You might need to tinker a bit to get the apps running, but typically most apps work fine out of the box after installing them without the need to make further adjustments. Still good to have those options just in case. In the beginning, I mentioned the camera to be essentially pointless and I stand by that assessment. It worsens handling because I can't put the tablet down flat on the desk without wobbling and still isn't all that great for scanning documents. That works consistently better on my Android phone. So I still don't see the point of having it on here. So more is not always better and I wished Onyx would just skip it next time. Another thing I'm not a big fan of is the device phoning home. That means that the Bookstep Ultra C makes connections to Chinese servers when not really needed from my point of view as a user because I am not using any book services and have software up the checks disable. Granted, Android is connecting to the web regularly, so that's not uncommon in by itself. But I prefer my electronic devices to connect to the outside world as little as possible and only when really needed. And those connections to Chinese servers, which I checked with Wireshark, by the way, serve no purpose for me. But Onyx Books has a privacy policy in place 
which states that they adhere to the data privacy protection law in the EU. So that's at least something. Which brings us to battery lot. With its 4,600 milliamp hour battery, the Bookstep Ultra C Pro is positioned right between the Note Air 3 series and the other Tep Ultra devices. And that's exactly how better a left turns out to be. It's not as bad as in the Note Air 3 C, which I feel is borderland to short twin e device, but not as good as on the regular Books Tep Ultra C. I think books manage to find a good middle ground for good handling and acceptable battery life. It's still not as good as I wished it would be, but totally usable without battery anxiety. Okay, so all in all, the Bookstuff Ultra C Pro is a pretty good productivity tablet with EEG and Android. I'd even say it's one of the best on the market. It has a good build quality, good haptics, a nice looking Kalido 3 screen, and with the keyboard and mouse pad offers excellent productivity features. What's not so great is the evenness of the front light, which honestly was the biggest letdown for me personally. I am very sensitive to these types of irregularities of the front light and definitely feel like it's affecting my comfort of using the tablet in this case. Smaller issues I have with the Bookstop Ultra C Pro are the sharp address and the camera I really wish they didn't include. And of course, the mentioned phoning home issue I regularly mention in my books reviews. So depending on what you're looking for in a productivity tablet, the Bookstep Ultra C Pro brings a lot to the table. And that's it. Like and subscribe if you found this review helpful. Also check out this review right here. Thanks for your time watching and see you in the next one.